I, I want you to, it's not rhetorical. So uh, what I would like to do is ask you, and you just, um, just, just yell out what you think the stronghold over the Quad Cities is. Just speak out if you have an idea what the stronghold... Don't say that one yet. What's the stronghold over the Quad Cities? What do we naturally think of as a stronghold over the Quad Cities? Would you think maybe like gang violence? Things like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, so maybe I should explain what a stronghold is. A stronghold is uh, a force that um, is prevalent in, in a, a region that leads to changing the culture or establishing a culture. And so what we normally think of I know I've, I've taught this and said this a couple of times, so there's people going, I'm not, I'm not going down that road. Um, so we were in Africa, in, uh, in Nigeria, in, uh, in August of last year, and uh, Apostle Gray got up and he said to this group of pastors and leaders, what is the stronghold over Nigeria? And uh, everything from, from um, love of money, um, uh, you know, uh, false teaching, deception, all these demonic strongholds they were listing out. Witchcraft. There's a lot of witchcraft uh, and, and all that stuff. And uh, as they finished yelling out all of these demonic strongholds, Greg said, you're wrong. Jesus Christ is the stronghold over Nigeria. So when we tend to look at the Quad Cities that we see, well, there's some gang activity, there's, there's, there's a few murders uh, going on, there's a stronghold of, of death, there's a stronghold of like violence, there's a stronghold of this. And if we believe that, then we're giving in to that culture. But if we understand that God is really sovereign, like we just sang, now being sovereign does not mean that everything that happens in this world is his will. And I know you, you're like, duh, but there's people that believe that. That if something happens, it has to be God's will because he's sovereign. His sovereignty has nothing to do with the free will of man. His sovereign, sovereignty has to do, he is the answer and he will pull through in his time. But he's given us free will and so demonic strongholds are prevalent over an area because men have let it happen. God is still sovereign, but man's not sovereign. Man has free will and he can do stupid things, foolish things, and he does, right? And so we've just got to remember that when we begin to pray over an area, the very first thing before we get into naming in uh, naming and, and casting out spirits is we've got to thank God that he is the stronghold over the Quad City area. He's the stronghold over Davenport. He's the stronghold over 53rd and Western. He's the stronghold over this church. Doesn't mean everything goes right. Doesn't mean there's not demonic influence in the Quad Cities, even in our region, in our, in our neighborhood, and even on this block. But Jesus Christ is the stronghold over this place. Amen? So uh, I want to talk to you today uh, about light. And the purpose of light is to reveal. And so I want to talk to you today about the subject that light brings revelation. Light brings revelation. Genesis 1 3. Really, 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 almost the very first thing God does in the beginning is He says, Let there be light. 
Light is the foundation of everything that God created. If you look that up in the Hebrew, here's how it would sound in Hebrew. God said, light be, and light was. Now there's sovereignty. Light be, and light was. And so, uh, the very first thing, you got to catch this, the very first thing that God did in creating the heavens and the earth was to share himself with us. The very first thing God did in creation was he shared himself with us. Light is revelation. God reveals light, light which illuminates us and it makes us shine with his light. He shares his light with us so that we will shine as light. We're created in his image. If his image is light, we're created as light. Interesting fact, if you get into physics and um, the understanding of how light travels, did you know that, that light travels on sound frequencies? Now, it's, I don't want to get into all of it because, first of all, I'm not a physicist. I like to study uh, quantum physics a lot because quantum physics are the principles of God that actually... Um, that actually run everything about what he created. And so when you get into quantum physics, you see God more than you see uh, physics. You see God doing things, and, and the way that he creates and then sustains things is through that quantum physics things. But I want to get into all that because that, that, that just hurts my head sometimes. So, light travels on sound waves. you know why we know that? God said... Let there be light. Light could not come until God said it. Everything that God created came through his mouth, came through his breath, came through sound. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when Jesus came to earth, what did he do? He spoke. He preached. He declared. He taught. Before it was ever written down, he spoke it into existence. And in his Sermon on the Mount, he said, you have heard that it was said, and he quoted the law, but I say to you, like here's a good one, he said, uh, you have heard that it is said, thou shalt not murder. But I say to you, if you hate someone, you've already murdered them. He was shedding some light on things, wasn't he? He was exposing things. Because the law said you can hate somebody, but if you murder them, you're in trouble. So, so John 1.5 this is the message, oh, 1 John 1, 5. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. See, God didn't just create light. He is light. So when he said, let there be light, he was sharing himself with us. So biblically, this isn't just a cute statement to make you go, whoa. No, this is actually biblical truth. God shared himself with creation, and it became what he called it to be. This is the message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. You ready for this one? 
What does darkness bring? Darkness brings guilt, shame, and condemnation. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, to those who are in the light. The other day, uh, we were getting ready for the Cherish Conference and and, um, China uh, came and practiced several times. And one day I was was sitting and... uh, I love to just, I mean, we've known China since she was like 10 or 12, and, and she's always been singing in groups and all that stuff. She's led worship at huge church, and, and uh, now she's, uh, uh, she uh, it was leaving for Cherish. And so she came to practice, and I just was sitting, and I had to be here just in case she needed more sound in the mantra or whatever, but I was just sitting here. And she was leading worship, and it was really good. And I've been studying light for a long time, but I was thinking about it. And I was just like, you know, what's interesting to me? You go into these churches that have these huge budgets, and, and they, they, they don't have any limits on what they can spend. And so they want to create a worship experience. And the very first thing they do is they turn the lights off. Come on, Right? And I went, why would you go to worship and turn the lights off? I get what they're doing. I know. I know. It, you know, it's that... It's that. <laughs> Sometimes we pattern our worship over rock concerts. We're supposed to pattern our worship from our heart to Him. It has nothing to do with ambience. He's supposed to be the ambience. He's supposed to be the special effects. But we've got smoke and we've got lights and spotlights and we've got, you know, those things, the Christmas lights behind that white thing. And we've got all this stuff and He's supposed to be, His presence is supposed to be the special effect. His light is supposed to be the special effect. One of the reasons I love this building, it was designed for light. You can't come in this sanctuary without some form of light coming in. Even at dark at night, the moon comes in and the stars shine in and there's still light in here. I love that. So I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm not making... This isn't a papal edict, which, of course, you know, there's no such thing as a papal edict. There's no pope. Jesus is the head of the church. But anyway, um, but my thing is, is I, I just don't think we're ever going to turn the lights off in worship just so we can have this... Oh, ambiance, because Jesus is the ambiance. The light is the ambiance. And so, anyway, I'm not saying that's a hard and fast rule. Um, I'm just saying we need to think about that. And uh, we need to make sure that we are doing what God wants us to do. And light dispels darkness. So why would we go back into darkness just to worship light? Amen? Anyway, that's not in the notes. That was free. And so, John 1, 4 through 5. Uh, it, 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 um, okay. I just realized I didn't write the scriptures out on my sheet like I normally do. So John, John 1, 4 through 5 says, In him was life, and that life was the light of men. Let's see how I did. Where's John 1, 4 through 5? There we go. Did I do well? In him, life was in him, and that life was the light of men. That word light is closely connected with the word, uh, with the word light in Acts chapter 2, uh, when it's talking about the baptism of fire. So fire and light are very closely connected. And I don't know about you, but if you have a bonfire... It creates smoke, right? But it also creates light, doesn't it? And so fire brings light. In fact, before we had electricity, we had to have fire to have light, right? We had to have a candle, we had to have a... a, a, a... Yeah, all that stuff. So, um, 
So light and fire are very closely related. So when someone says, wow, man, I sure see the fire of God in Cheryl, you know what they're saying? She's saying she is light. You are the light of the world. Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. Then he turned around a few passages later and said, you are the light of the world. If you're in me, you're the light of the world. You're on fire. So guess what you have to do? You have to maintain your own fire. You have to maintain your own light. That's not my job. That's, that's not even Jesus' job. Because Jesus said you're light. Now we've got to maintain that light. Right? Jesus said no one lights a candle and then hides it under a bushel, right? Or a basket or whatever. Nope. This church has been prophesied it's a light house. Right? And, and I don't know, last year sometime, uh, we were gifted uh, some exterior lights because it was kind of dark around the property. And so uh, someone gifted that. And, and now this place shines at night. And I think that's just an extension of that prophecy that this is a lighthouse. And so anyway, um, your, your fire is your light shining through. And so if you walk into a place and your light isn't shining through, it's possible your fire has, has, has burned out or has gone to embers, which is not near as light as, as the fire. If people can't see your fire, you aren't sharing light. I, uh, I have this condition. My grandfather had it and my dad had it. My Aunt Pam has it. Um, and, and that is, is that my resting face is a frown. And so wherever I go, people are whispering, like our kids will go, Mom, what's wrong with Dad? She'll go, I don't know, why don't you ask him? So someone will come up and say, you okay? I go, yeah, why? And they'll go, well, you kind of look mad. I said, no, I'm in a good mood, I'm really happy. What's the problem with you? You know? And, you know, I, I finally realized, I finally looked in the mirror long enough to go, I, my natural resting face is a frown. So you know what I do? Every day, when I'm reminded that my natural face is a frown, I start smiling. And it's become a habit. I was talking to Vicki yesterday after school, and, and I was talking to her about, you know, that my, my natural resting face is a frown. And she goes, I never would have known that. Every time I see you, you're smiling and laughing. I said, well, I have to do that on purpose. Otherwise, um, it, it naturally goes to a frown. And so I'm trying to change that. I'm trying to get it to where when I wake up in the morning, I just start smiling and I don't stop smiling until I go to bed at night. I'm trying to actually physically change my frown into a smile because I don't want people to think that I'm upset about things. I mean, I can be in the middle of worship and I'm like, and people go, what's wrong with you? I, go, I love the Lord so much. You know? And it's like, oh, okay. And so, but when I'm at Walmart, they don't know me enough to know that I love the Lord so much. So at Walmart, I got to walk around and go, smile, Mike. You know, and it's like, Ooh. I mean, it's tough. Sometimes we have to, you know, it's one thing to die to the flesh, but to die to the way the flesh goes. Joyce Meyer has a frown resting face. And everybody used to say to her, man, you just look mad all the time. You know what? She went and had plastic surgery and got a, got a smile in her face because she said, I don't want people to think I'm mad. And she said, I purposely did it. I checked with the Lord. He didn't have a problem with it. She said, and while I was there, I... I kind of got a facelift too because he's coming back for a bride without spot or wrinkle. So I got my wrinkles out too, she said. And I'll tell you what, she got a lot of heat for that. You know what I said? Good for you. You can afford it. Go ahead and do it. I can't afford plastic surgery, so I got to train my face to smile because I want light to shine. I don't want darkness to shine. And uh, anyway, 
So John uh, 12, 35 through 36. Um, Jesus answered, the light will be with you only a little while longer. He's talking about himself. Walk while you have the light so that darkness doesn't overtake you. We are beams of light. We're rays of light. We are carriers of light. Kirk said, every person here carries something, right? Right? And, and that usually means we have a different piece of the puzzle. We have a different gift. But all of us carry light. Right? So now, when you see me sitting somewhere, and I'm like this, you can come up to me and go, because we're all supposed to carry light. That's a joke. I'm not saying, don't touch my face, please. I might be having a cold that day. I don't want you to get a cold, so I'm just joking about that. But I'm just saying, so so Cheryl will sometimes, uh, has sometimes a past good, uh, smile, Mike, because she sees me sitting there, you know, and she just says, smile, Mike, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Because I do, I want to shine the light. I don't want to look like, uh, what was that ventriloquist that had Walter? I can't remember what his name is, but he had this old curmudgeon of a guy that uh, a, a ventriloquist dummy and he, he just complained all the time he just was ornery and angry all the time I don't want to be that guy and so I think it was the Muppets had those two guys up in the balcony too you know I don't want to be that I, I want to be Grover you remember Grover he was just happy all the time or Elmo laughing Elmo I don't want to be I always liked animal but let's don't get into that so anyway um, our fire's got to shine forth so the world sees the source of light. Right? Our fire, what is it there for? It's to shine the source of light to people. And that's what we have to be just intent on doing that. John eight twelve 12 uh, is a, another verse that helps us to understand this whole concept. And John eight twelve. Jesus spoke to them again. I am the light of the world. Anyone who follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So let me ask you a question. Are there areas of our Quad City metro area that you won't go into? Are there areas you're scared to go to in the Quad Cities. Let me just, it's rhetorical, let me just tell you, there are areas you're scared to go into and you won't go into. All right? Me too. Until I understood the principle of light and now I go into those areas. You know why? Because if somebody doesn't walk in there with light, it's only going to be darkness in there. When the, uh, when the group came, two times we've hosted, um, man, I always forget the name of that group, but um, the, the group that, that came in, they all the like 15, 20 people lived here for two days, and then they'd go down and they'd minister somewhere. They'd have a concert and they'd minister somewhere. So the last time, um, Jerry, the guy that was leading it, he said to me, can you get us into... Uh, the, the, the skate park area down in Davenport on the riverfront. And so uh, I was like, well, sure I can. And, and I understood why. Number one, some of, the, some of the kids that came were skaters. And so they wanted to go to skate parks, not to skate, but to skate and bring light in. And so I got it all set up. I, you know, I got the permits we needed and all that stuff. But but here's what I didn't know. On the on the, there's the, the skate park is kind of um, it's kind of got a berm around it, and uh, on the other side of the berm, on what would be the west side, is the homeless park. It's where the homeless sleep. 
I didn't, I didn't know that because I never searched out to find where the homeless park is. Before. And so uh, I went, okay, I get it. I know why. I know he wants to be in the skate park because they want to minister to the, the people that the church doesn't spend a lot of time ministering to. And so uh, the people the church are scared of. And I, I got to tell you, there's you got to use wisdom when you go into a place. I'm not saying throw caution to the wind and just, just walk into the middle of a gang fight and go, oh, I want to talk to you about Jesus because you'll probably get knifed or shot. And, you know, I mean, you got to be prepared to die for your faith. But you also got to be smart about things, right? you got to use wisdom. So they, uh, they set everything up. They had this concert going on. And uh, they had a, a Christian rapper up there. And uh, the homeless camp, uh, there were a couple people getting really agitated. And uh, so they came over the berm and they started coming up towards the stage. And they were starting to make problems. Get out of here. This is our home. This isn't your home. Because this, this is uh, right, after, right when it's turning dark. And that's when they will come to the park and they'll set up their sleeping bags and everything and they'll sleep there. And uh, so, um, I forgot to tell you one thing. So I had told Jerry, I said, I want to come down to the concert. He said, will you do me a favor? I said, what's that? He goes, we're going to start at 6. He said, will you wait till about 8 o'clock? I said, well, yeah. He goes, okay, because he said, we have to establish our presence, and we have to do spiritual warfare. And he said, I I don't want you down there when we're doing that, because it can get kind of hairy. He said, if you would just wait till about 8 o'clock, uh, he said, I think that'll be safe. So we came down. Cheryl and I went down there at 8 o'clock. And, you know, we kind of look like skaters, so they accepted us. <laughs> we don't look like skaters. And I, I tried to wear what I think uh, would be clothes that I would blend in, but I, I still dress like the 70s. So I don't fit in anywhere I go. But anyway, we, we went down there, and, and you know, we, we kind of looked at the place and all that stuff. But anyway, so we got down there. Well, at, right at the moment we got there was when there was a little brewing of, of hatred and darkness coming. And so I watched, and here's what happened. Jerry went up, the guy that was rapping, <clears throat> as he finished, Jerry said, shut the sound system off. So they shut everything down, and they had... Um, one of the guys uh, that I know, and they had him come up just with his acoustic guitar. And he started playing, lean on me when you're on... I don't know all the words. la da 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 Yeah, lean on me. And the whole... And then everybody came around and they were just singing all that song. And the homeless people started singing it. And all of a sudden, I watched those guys. They didn't use a Christian song. They used a song that they could connect with other people. And all of a sudden, everything just evened out, balanced out. And all of a sudden, darkness kind of went away. It was, it was, by that time, it was getting dark sky-wise, but it was getting light because all of a sudden, peop, all, the, all the skaters and all the people that were with the group, believers, kind of came over to the stage and they just, Lean on me when you're la, la, la. And, and it created an atmosphere, and all the fighting and arguing stopped. And within minutes, one-on-one, they were ministering with these homeless people, and they were receptive. Because light dispels darkness. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you just become the light. As long as you just identify with people at the very core nature of who we are, we were... Once darkness, but now we are light. So when we go into darkness, we're going there to bring light, which dispels darkness. Now, I don't suggest all of you tonight, after dark, go down to the homeless camp and just start singing, lean on me. Because that was a very special time, a very specific thing that happened. But I'm telling you, wherever you go, be the light. Walmart needs light. Um, the Quad City, what, Bandits? Is that the baseball team, Bandits? 
Yeah. That's the John O'Donnell Stadium, or whatever they call it now, needs light. My, my favorite one is uh, Texas Roadhouse needs light. I like steak, so if you want to buy me dinner there, I'll be light there. That'd be awesome. Some of you have, and I appreciate it. And so <clears throat> everywhere we go, the purpose is not to buy groceries or to do your laundry or to mail a package or mail a letter. It's to be light. And while you're being light, get some groceries. While you're being light, do your laundry at the laundromat. While you're being light, mail your packages or your letters. And watch how you change. Because when you dispel darkness, the atmosphere becomes conducive to sharing more light. Does this make sense? Is, this isn't physics. This is just sowing and reaping. I can't see the clock. I guess I'm on time. So, um, just kidding. First John one seven says that light light produces a fellowship that produces more light. The purpose of our fellowship is to create light. Sustain light. It's not to eat potlucks. That's a benefit, right? Not to drink steam anchor coffee, although that's a benefit. Actually, when my son-in-law said, so he came, last year he came to uh, well, every year he comes to the Cherish Conference and helps us. And so he went to get some coffee, and he goes, he drank his first drink, he goes, what kind of coffee is this? <laughs> now, he, he, owns, he owns a coffee cafe, he owns a roastery, uh, he wants to someday own a plantation and grow his own beans so he doesn't have to buy them from other people. This guy knows coffee, so... He could tell the difference between Folgers, Maxwell House, although he wouldn't like any of them. But, I mean, he just knows. And, and so he said, all right, that's it. He said, I will provide coffee free for your church if you promise me you'll never serve Folgers again. And listen, I don't mind Folgers. I just don't tell my son-in-law that. Hope he doesn't watch this tape. But here's the key. You know what he's doing? Sharing light. He, he can't come here every week. He lives, you know, all the way in Fulton. He's, he's on the board at River Church, so he couldn't very well go to another church being on that board. So he has to go to his church. But the key is, is if he can do something for us, he's really sharing life. He says, I'm giving you the, ex, the, the, the benefit of my expertise in coffee and roasting process and all that. And so here, I'm just going to provide coffee for you. If you promise me, you'll never use store-bought coffee ever again. That's him being light. It's the only way he knows how to be light. I mean, he's a believer, and, and he also can give a testimony. He can be light. But, I mean, it's just him sharing the best of what he does with us. So the point of this isn't the coffee. It's that light produces light. Now, I happen to know there's some people here that noticed the difference and went, wow, I really like that coffee. <laughs> and that's the benefit of it. But it's not the purpose. It wasn't to get you to where you're a coffee snob. It's just, hey, here's some light. Because fellowship produces more light. You get one candle, and it's got one, what they call it candle power or candle, I can't remember what the term is. Huh? Lumens. Lumens, yeah. But you put two, and there's more light. Put five, there's way more light. You go to Kirk's birthday party, and there's a lot of light on the cake. 
I say that in love. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mine, mine, I'm only like seven years younger, so mine's got a lot of light too. You see what I'm saying? The, light more, the, the more people that come together, the more light that comes together. We should be letting that light shine instead of announcing what our differences are to the world. Most of the time the church is, well, come to our church, we believe the truth. And then what we're really saying is, that church over there, they don't really believe the truth. We have the best youth pastor. And this church over there is hearing, oh, our youth pastor stinks. But that's what happens. The church, I don't care if you're Baptist or Pentecostal or anything in between, the church should be shedding light, sharing light. Instead, we air our differences in public and say, our denomination believes. You know what? Every denomination has a little deception in their, in their uh, doctrinal statement because they believe they're the best. They believe they're right. None of us is 100% right on anything. So, quit, quit arguing about doctrine and just be the light. We all believe Jesus is the only way. Why don't we focus on that? Amen? Amen. All right. When light hides itself, light is limited. So when we isolate, right? Okay. Our ministry goes on inside these four walls, and if we'll open the door, and if people want to hear about Jesus, we'll let them come to us. Well, isolated light limits the amount of light that you see. We can't be isolated to just this corner. We've got to get across the street, across the uh, property line. We've got to get into the neighborhood. We've got to get into the city, into the metropolitan area, into each state. All right. Finally, John uh, 3.21. Yeah, John 3.21. I was just there, wasn't I? I will never forget to write out the scriptures on my paper ever again. John 3.21. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. You're not light on your own. You're light because you're in Christ. You're in the source of light. And so when you go out and produce more light, you're not doing it. God's doing it through you. So if you're scared to go share your light, all you got to do is show up. God will do the rest. You don't even have to prepare what you're going to say. Because the Bible says, don't worry about what you say when you're in front of councils and governments, for the Holy Spirit will give you what to say. So here's what, here's, here's what he's saying. Just show up. I'll do the rest. You don't have to have your own strategic plan. You just show up. Wherever you go, be there, and God will do the rest. You just got to listen to what he's saying and then speak what he's saying. See where he's moving and go move with that movement. That's how easy it is to be light and to share light. That makes sense? All right. Who wants to be light? Come on, I got to see him. You want to be light? Right? All right. Would, would you stand with me? I want to pray. <clears throat> and Carol, you can, you can come up and lead us uh, in the last song. Father, your word says you will accomplish everything through us. And so I'm praying right now for each and every person here that's standing or sitting, that's raised their hand or didn't raise their hand. Uh, I just pray for every person here, every person who will hear this message on YouTube, um, every person that will be involved with the people that are here today this week when they begin to share light. I pray, Father, that we would trust you 
that you're the, as, as, as uh, Clay prayed, you're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. If you were light to the apostles 2,000 years ago, you're going to be light to us today and tomorrow and for the rest of uh, the history of this world. And so I just pray, Father, for uh, just an in, uh, a, a, a infusing of light into each person right here. And understanding that being the light doesn't require any work on our part. It just requires being a vessel for the Holy Spirit to share and shine light wherever we go in this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.